Trip has just been updated to Trip 2.0 and that brings a whole new level of realism in this simulator. I hope you enjoy the video and if you do, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Let's just get into the simulator and see what has changed in Trip 2.0. So inside Trip here, there's a few things that we need to take a look at. First off, multiplayer is not here yet, but it will come at some point. Now under the options menu, it's pretty much the same. It's the layout have changed a little bit, but not a whole lot. So the first thing we have are the rates. The rates are pretty much as you've seen most other simulators with the exception that we actually have a throttle curve we can set up if we want to. It's not something I personally use, but you can definitely use it if you are someone who does that. Under the controller settings, this have also changed quite a bit, but it is very much the same. You can see over here where the throttle, yaw, still does the exact same thing. One of my issues here is that I need to use always auto arm because if we scroll down here and find the arm disarm, even though it is set for controller access four, that is supposed to be my arm button, it doesn't work like that. And I can't really arm or disarm while in the game, which is a bit annoying, but I will get used to it. If you do not see your controller moving at all, you can click up here and find your controller. Be careful that you plug in the controller before starting off trip or else it will not work. If you are using something like a Xbox PlayStation controller, you can enable throttle zero and middle. Whenever you center your stick, it will go to zero throttle. After that, we have probably the most amazing thing in this new simulator. That is the drone setup. Now, as you can see here, this is how it is when you are in easy mode. You have the option here to select a few drones. They have made three presets, the Gino, the Nazgul and the Trip Racer, but I decided to make two more for myself, which mimics my drones a lot more. Now, what we see here is the simple setup, but if we press this switch to pro mode, we get access to a whole lot more. In the overview tab here, we can get the weight of the drone to match what you are using. So if you are using another frame, you can match the weight there, the battery, the camera, and so on. This is close to what I am using and these here, I have not changed those, those are just fine. They are very close to what I'm flying in real life, so I don't have to change anything. But you can just measure out your body of the drone and your arm length and plug them in. Now the next thing here are the engines, which is where you can set the KV here and you can set the number of cells that you are using on your battery here. It's very simple. I don't touch these at all. These are working just fine. The next thing we have are the propellers. I'm using 5.1 inch, 3.6 pitch and a blade width of 0.39. I don't touch these down here. If you are using something like five blades or three, four blades or five blades, you can also adjust the number of blades over here. It will not reflect on the drone itself. As you can see, I can increase, but it will not show it in the preview window over here. I don't touch anything under the aerodynamics. These are working just fine. There's no reason to touch any of this. And the same with the global tab. I don't touch anything in here either. You can experiment here with gyro noise and your power, but it feels pretty realistic just the way this is set up. Now, when it comes to setup, this for me is the most amazing thing that they actually implemented a full beta flight. And they did this with the beta flight developer team. So everything should be working exactly as it should. Now this drone flew pretty great from what I set up. No reason to tune it a whole lot. You can do that. You can actually try and see what happens if you over dampen or under dampen without risking damaging your real drone. You also have a physics info here up here where you can read about what does everything do. A little thing I would like to have is just a quick info box next to each of these sliders. So I could check out, or if I just hover over them, it would just show me what exactly they do because I don't always remember every one of them and I might need to go look them up. You can also adjust your field of view and your camera angle. If you prefer to fly with a bit more analog feel, you can enable this goggle view or you can also enable this 4-3 ra ratio. I do that because I'm on a 21 by nine screen. So if I don't do that, it will be stretched and the field of view will be really, really far off. Now, along with the beta flight implementation and the pit loop, you can also enable so you can see what the gyro set point and pit error is actually doing when you are flying. That has some major benefits that you can actually see what is happening and you can go in and you can tune things. They have a learn to fly. I have not tried that. I will try that 
in another video. So that is the menu system that has been overhauled quite a lot and we've gotten a lot of great new features. Now let's get into the map. There are four maps currently and there are more to come of course. I don't like selecting a map then flying to the place but if you click this button here that says sort by spots you can select a spot where you want to fly. This is an easier way to see it for me so I can quickly just see where I want to fly and click that. Let's go and fly. Now we are inside the simulator and as you can see I have an FPS of 119 and a latency of 8.4 milliseconds. I would like to be able to add latency so I can match it to what my real life drone is having maybe a radio link latency and a video link latency but that is something that might be able to come in a later point. Now if I enable physics by moving the throttle in just a second you can see on the left side we have the roll pitch and your axis pit loop that is running and we can see what it is doing so we can actually tell that it is active you see everything is working as it should i haven't done a whole lot of tuning on this drone this is fine with just a pi slider to 1.4 and that is it i think this have been a great update for trip I mean, the physics are feeling very real. And especially with that pit controller running it all, it's just feeling a lot more like a real drone does. Especially if you compare it to something like Liftoff or Uncrashed. I think these guys have nailed the physics a bit more. My two biggest issues with this simulator is that I cannot arm and disarm on a switch. Now I click the uh, disarm button and nothing happens as you can see. So that's a bit annoying. Uh, I don't know why that is, but I hope they will fix it in an update. A thing I really do like in this simulator compared to Uncrashed is actually when you do crash, it is a lot more feeling like it should. It is spinning you out of control if you hit one of the sides and you will might not be able to course correct. As you can see there, crashing does feel a lot more real. And if you are turning upside down, it will try to flip you over or something will try to work. I don't know. It will freak out until you are right side up again. So the final verdict for Trip 2.0 is that it is a great update and it brings so much more to the table. It has beta flight implementation. It has great physics. There are still a few bugs that needs to be sorted out. But other than that, it is very close to being the perfect simulator and is definitely worth your time and your money if you're considering getting an FPV simulator to fly over the winter or just when it's bad weather outside. If you liked the video, please remember to click that like button. Let's get out and get flying. Started on the 4th of July We had all the fire But oh, we had no money And oh, it was a glorious time Images, they were flashing outside And I can see the glint in your eyes